So today what I want to talk about is adding a new feature to your to your app. I want to be able to uh, use some social media. There's a plugin that will allow us to send content to all the social networks basically and also to be able to send an email. So use case scenarios are for example, email. We'll do that one first. We'll set up a way for a person inside of your app to click to send you, the developer, an email. They want to get in touch with you, you'll have a way to send an email to you or anyone you want, but we'll have it set, you'll get an email. Uh, so that'll be, you know, questions, troubleshooting, praise, whatever they're going to contact you about. The other part of the use case scenario is we can set up the social sharing aspect where from our app we can send out a tweet or post to Facebook, etc. For example, to, prom to help you promote your app. Let's say your app is published, it's pretty cool, there's a button here that says share the app. Tell your friends about the app. That'll pop up and it'll let them post on Facebook. A picture, a message, etc. about the app. Both of those features come from the same plugin. This plugin then is extra. It's not built into the basic Cordova uh, framework. We have to add it. It's a, it's a plug-in. It extends it. So here's what we want to do. Go online and we're going to search the keywords Cordova social sharing. So in any search engine, you can search for Cordova social sharing. You should get a bunch of results, but the one we want is over at the website github.com slash This is a developer who's put out a very popular plugin that lets you do these things to connect to social media, send emails from your app. So GitHub, Eddie Verbruggen, social sharing, phone gap plugin. Remember, maybe I haven't said it so much, but phone gap is synonymous with Cordova. There's other variations as well, Taco, uh, XDK. But whenever you see documentation that mentions phone gap, it's the same as Cordova, basically. So here, we're going to click the developer's documentation. It's going to go over to his GitHub account, Cordova plugin to share, text a file, like images, PDFs, or a URL, or all three, via the native sharing widget. So once we install this, whatever the, the device the person has, Android, iOS, Windows, uh, they click the sharing button that you set up, and then a pop-up happens, depending on the device, that then says share via email, share via Twitter, share via Gmail, connect to Safari, whatever, depending on the device its native sharing widget. We will be able to access it with this plugin. So you'll be able to find this by just searching anywhere Cordova social sharing. It's the first result at GitHub. And what we see here then is the documentation with a donate button. And I do recommend you donate at some point, even a few dollars, enough for a coffee or a beer or something, because this is a very cool plugin that a developer created and put out for free. Is not a big company or organization like other things. It's good to once in a while pay the people that are making great things, especially if they work well on your project. You can go see more code examples and such looking at their Telerik or Telerik page. Scrolling down, description, it says how what platforms it works on, Android 2.3 and up, probably on 2.2 iOS 6 and up, Windows 8, share text, links images are all of them. Uh, so all of this stuff, it's compatible with our version of Cordova. And the phone gap build, which we'll talk about later. Some screenshots. If this were installed on an iPhone, you click the button that you set up in your app, and it pops up on the iPhone to be able to share in these different ways. So, for example, sharing to Twitter, right from your app, you will get the option to share directly to Twitter or to post to Facebook with the details of posting to Facebook. 
sharing options are based on what has been set up on the device. So if the device has Facebook installed or Twitter or other things, you will be able to let the person share to those devices. If they don't have Facebook installed on that phone, it doesn't share to Facebook. It needs the Facebook app installed. There's the iPad version, iPhone 6, looks like that on Android. It's going to pop up with a list of compatible apps. So you'll be able to send it to LinkedIn and that sort of thing. So basically all the social networks. Windows Phone, we will do that as well. Installing. In a moment, in the command prompt, we're going to type inside of our app, we're going to type Cordova plugin add, and then Cordova dash plugin dash x dash social sharing. So that plugin add command lets you add all of the official Cordova plugins and plugins from other people that they've put out there to the world. GitHub is a place that a lot of developers use to put out their code to the world. And then we're able to connect and, and install it. We'll have to do a command we haven't done before, which is Cordova prepare. Then we'll have the ability to start using the plugin. So this part about phone gap, don't worry about that. We'll need this part about Cordova. Don't worry about this manual one. We're doing it via the Cordova command. After this, again, don't worry, phone get build. Okay, usage on iOS and Android. Basically, there's a there's a syntax um, with examples. This is a big, quick and dirty example, but we'll see in a moment how it works. We have window dot plugins dot social sharing dot share. That's the JavaScript command we can type. Here they did it really bad with uh, inline JavaScript, which we want to avoid. But when, you, when there's a button that's clicked, run the social sharing plugin, and there's a bunch of arguments to supply, a bunch of examples. Uh, and we'll be able to share also directly to Twitter. The code is a little different to Facebook, Instagram. There's also an example of email. This is the one we'll do first, something like this. And just behind the scenes, it works. But the big idea is we need the plugin installed. So the way we will get this to work is you can go to your command prompt. Make sure you're in the folder of your project. And I'm in the folder of my project. And then we type the command Cordova plugin add. Cordova dash plugin dash x dash social sharing. Let me just confirm the spelling on that. social sharing. Yep. So type that in your project. I'm just following the documentation. So put over plugin add, put over dash plugin dash x dash social sharing. Let that happen when that's done. Next you need to do code over prepare. What this means is, if I was connecting to, for example, the list of official Cordova plugins, we typed all of that Cordova-plugin-camera. So the internal name in the plugin marketplace is Cordova plugin camera. The name of, of the social sharing app in the or plugin in the marketplace is x-social sharing. So press enter on that, let it connect. It's going to connect over to the Node Package Manager. That's the marketplace, Node, Node.js Package Manager. And it's going to find the files, connect, add it to the project. 
and then you have to prepare. Yes? No, nope, we're downloading it right here by doing Cordova plugin and this is connecting to GitHub and downloading it and installing it. The GitHub is just the documentation. That's where we would go to learn how it works. If we wanted to install it manually, remember there was a section how to install manually, which is a lot more steps. This step of just Cordova plugin add does everything. Connects, downloads, installs, and gets it ready. So the first time it takes a moment, probably because we're all connecting at the same time, it might take a moment as well. Let that install and then Cordova prepare. After we install this, then we just need to add the JavaScript command in our, in our project. So what I want to do in the About screen, in the About screen I want to add a button that says Email the developer, or Email us, whatever friendly way we want to say it. So we'll have a button in the index file, in the About screen, then we'll write the JavaScript. We will activate that button to do something on click. We'll have a function, and inside of that function to send an email, we'll write the code example that it gives us here in the, in the GitHub page. We'll do that in one moment. Is it slow for everyone else also? Okay, we'll just wait for me for a moment. My drive is blinking, so it's still probably thinking. While it's doing that, I guess, here's what you can also do. You know, on any search engine, you can search for Cordova Bluetooth plugin, for example. So the idea is searching Cordova plugin and what you're trying to do, like Bluetooth. So here's someone over here. Tan Tanali has a plugin. And if you see anything that says phone gap, that's basically synonymous with Cordova. So one of these might be a good one. I haven't looked at one recently. I haven't used Bluetooth that much. <clears throat> haven't had to. Yes? So we just uh, need to add the uh, search on x1. That's all we do. Well, according to the documentation, we are at, we're doing Cordova plugin add and then Cordova dash plugin dash x dash social zero. So far, yes. I'm just waiting for mine, because it's taking forever. If yours finished, you might have, you know, you might have done it first before me, so yours is done. It's still thinking? Okay, I'll check you in one moment. So there's uh, many other plugins out there. If you want your app to interface with Bluetooth, there's a plugin that someone invented out there. So you just search for it, you'll find how to use it. When I, when I type, there was a line that says something like, 
All right, let me check on mine. I think mine finished eventually. All right, so then I also need to do Cordova prepare. So after you add the plugin, the next thing you want to do is Cordova prepare. <coughs> All right, so I didn't get any feedback, but if it didn't work, it'll probably tell you. All right, mine's done. That's all I need to do in the command prompt at the moment, but on any app that you work on in the future, if you want this social plugin, that's, that's the command. So in order for it to work, let's open up the index file in our WW folder in Notepad. Let's open the index file in Notepad. And we need to add a new button to make all of this work. Go to your WW folder of your project. Open up index. If you scroll down to line 185 or so, you'll find the about section. Go find your about section. The About section has a picture, it has some text, then we've got a button, Personalize. We're going to add another button to Contact Us, or Contact the Developer. So I'm going to copy the paragraph there that holds the um, Personalize button, and we'll change that to Contact Us. To change these other details as well. href, we leave it alone. Data roll button, we leave that alone. Data icon user, we have an icon, I believe it's either mail or email, I always forget. We'll be able to add a mail icon, and then we need a new ID, btn email us. So that will be a new button for people to email us or contact us. So you made a new paragraph first? No, I copied it. It's already there. Paragraph, href, just copy and paste. To save some effort. In my case, it was at about 199. So you can use mail, M A I L, as your data icon. And now we'll have a cool mail icon for your, for your button. So make sure you set your uh, ID. If you copied and pasted, you definitely need to change your ID or you'll get an error. You cannot have more than one thing with the same ID. BTN, contact us. Then we'll go into the JavaScript file now to actually make it work. This is just the visuals, but to make it actually work, we need to be in the JavaScript file. So inside your JS folder, open the index.js file. JS folder, open index.js. We'll go all the way to the very end. Line 369, and the uh, function nuke, and the received event. Anything we add to our project, it should be inside of the received event function. So line 369, I'm going to give myself a spot there, maybe, some, maybe a comment social sharing section.
We'll use the jQuery mobile selector. To select the um, the right element, BTN contact us. That button that we just created in the HTML file has an ID, and with the jQuery mobile selector, we're selecting it. Right, the dollar symbol parentheses is the jQuery mobile selector. Now throughout the project, we've been doing things like creating a jQuery object. Um, especially during the pouch section. In the pouch section, we had done var l button save, which is based on the button on screen, the ID element. So either way works. I prefer this way a little bit more. It takes a little bit more writing, where we create a variable, a jQuery variable, and then the jQuery selector to select the ID. I like that a little bit better because then you, there's a little bit less to write later. It's also more more concise. You can just refer to this throughout your code instead of this, which is not that many more bytes, but depending how you name that, that might be more efficient. We wrote it in a way that we've done it at the beginning of the class uh, weeks ago, where we had something like, like that. So either or works. What we're doing that way, where we can then have an on method on the event of a click of clicking the contact us button run a function so on click comma run a function we'll call function contact us we don't need to pass any parameters into that function so we just call it as is if we needed to pass parameters, we needed to have a, an anonymous function first. Next line, we need to define what is function contact us. Before I forget, that's end function contact us function. So reading the documentation, we have, we have a way for the user to select how to, how to use the sharing apps. Or we have a way to, for us to select the sharing app. Share directly to Twitter. Share directly to email. Share directly to Facebook. Or have them choose. <coughs> Both of those ways start off the same way. Inside of this function, we'll type window.plugins dot social sharing dot one more thing this final one determines let the person choose or let us choose for example we would have share that would be the way for the person for themselves to choose I don't want that one I want share via email notice the spelling has to be spelled this way. Why? Because Eddie Verbruggen, when he invented this, said it's got to be spelled out. So we're using the social sharing plugin, particularly the share by email method that Eddie invented. So here we can say set up 
sharing, quote unquote sharing, directly to email. Requires a lot of arguments, a lot of parameters. It requires who are we sending this email to? So a two field. It requires a subject. What's the subject of the email? Uh, we can fill in an attachment if we're going to send an attachment. So it has a bunch of these. Uh, we'll write the general syntax of it and then fill in the details. But make sure that you've got the command plugged in, then I'm going to break the parentheses into a couple of lines. It's going to be a lot re more readable if we break it. For the moment, let's write this. Null, comma, comment, message body. Next line, null, comment, subject. Null, comma, to, field, in an array. Null. Now I'm putting just the placeholder null to say we're going to need to fill these things in in a moment. But these are the different fields that we need to set up when we send an email. Here's where the message body, and these things can be changed. The user can change any of these. We can pre-populate a subject, but they can change it. Next comes CC field in an array. technically in an array of strings. Next is BCC. You can even include a BCC. What's a BCC field? What's that? Blind copy. So you'll, <coughs> to, you'll be able to send an email to people, but other people don't know you sent them an email in an array of strings. Next one is attachments relative to the root of the project. Requires usually www. We'll see how that makes sense in a moment. No, one more, uh, or two more. This is a success callback. And the last one with no comma. Failure callback. Last one, no comma. So in order for this share by email to work, we have to supply all of these. And even if we're not going to use the blind carbon copy, we need a null placeholder. Why? Because that's what the documentation says. So if I want to send an email, but I only wanted to send it to one person, I put their email there. And I have to put null to the CC and null to the BCC. That's why we're kind of setting it up. These are the possibilities of our parameters, and it's they should be null if you're not going to use them. Don't leave them empty, because it's going to look for all 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's going to look for all eight of those parameters, and if it doesn't have it, it'll, it'll fail. We put a null where we're not going to use one of the arguments, one of the parameters. So what will happen here is the person will click the button, contact us. It will pop up with their built-in email system. It'll pop up in, in my Android's Gmail app. Or if I'm on my iPhone, it'll pop up in my mail app. 
however their email is set up. We can pre-populate a message. I suppose you should say as a string. Meaning quotes. Instead of null, we'll, we'll say something like uh, regarding your app. So an email message will, will open up and it'll automatically say in the body about your app. We can add there a break so that then they can start writing their next line. If they don't want to say about your app, they can delete it. But we can pre-populate the message body with as much text as we want there. So we can have it automatically say something there like customer service, like we'll get back to you as soon as possible. When you send us your email, your input is valuable. Break, and then they can type their message. Okay, subject, same sort of thing. In quotes, all of these are basically a string. Um, we can say my SDCE feedback. So the the subject will automatically be filled in with this, which they can change. One cool thing about this is that then you can set up filters. We created a developer certificate. We did that key key tool app. We created a developer certificate. We're a developer. We then created an Amazon developer account. You were a developer. You should have some sort of email address as a developer. Instead of your usual one, you can go create a free Gmail or whatever as a developer. Victor apps at gmail.com, whatever. So if I've got an inbox, if I've got a mail, you know, a mail system, I can set up filters on every email type of account. You can set up filters. So if you put in a certain subject onto the, the email of this app, let's say you make seven apps, you make this app and you have a certain subject, you can set up a filter in your email to catch that email and put it into a certain mailbox so you can deal with it as a developer. They can change this if they want. The to field and the CC and BCC fields are a little different. They have to be in an array. Remember an array is a list of email addresses. An array is a list of elements. And in this case, email addresses in quotes. You can technically send this to more than one person by then putting comma, quotes, another email, comma, another quotes. It's better to put the other people in the CC field. So two field in an array of strings. Remember you've got those quotes. Make sure those quotes are on the email. To fully test this, I would recommend put a real email address, your real email address, so you can fully test it. You're going to test it on a device, and you're going to try to send the email, and if you're pointing it to your real email, you'll get the full proof that it works. So I recommend put your real email that you'd be able to check. We're not going to CC it. We're not going to use the CC field, so we'll leave it null. If we don't use a field, we have to leave it null. In the BCC field, we'll leave it null, but here's an example why. Uh, don't type this, but we could type um, you know, secret account gmail.com. So someone's going to get the message, but then a copy of it blindly is sent to someone else, that the user sending the email never knows where it went. And this could be for further tech support, customer service. So it'll send it to other emails. It's got to be in an array of strings. We won't actually BCC it to anyone, so I'll leave it null. Attachments. In the case here, in quotes, I will put a path to any element or any file in my app. For example, in the, in the app itself, 
in the images folder, you know, we have a couple of images like the CE, like the CE do seal horizontal black and white. If I wanted to attach that to my email, I have to put a path to this graphic. And we have to include the WW part because sort of the root of the plugin is at the root of your project. So if I wanted to get that graphic, we don't assume a path inside WW. So we're going to try this. We're going to add in quotes www slash images slash the name of any attachment in your project. If you want to attach for whatever reason the jQuery library, we put in its its path. If we had something else to attach here, we put its full path. So attachments. In quotes, www slash images slash the name of an example graphic. Just to see it work. I'm going to email myself for testing purposes a copy of that graphic. It will automatically attach it. If you want no attachments, leave it null. The final two, kind of like pouch, when you try to do something, you get a result, success or failure callbacks. So here, we can call functions with results. We will not get that complex because either it's going to work or not, but if you wanted it to do other things like play a sound, vibrate, we would want to call a function. We'll keep it simple by having an anonymous function. So for the success, we'll write function. So at this moment, create an anonymous function that works at this moment. If you wanted it to be more complex, instead you'd have the name of your function, like you know, email a uh, success. I'd have to then go off and define email as success. Keep it simple. This anonymous function is going to have, like we were seeing, we were with pouch we had success, we had failure. So first we'll deal with success. The parameter here is success. The, the returned object is success. And all I really want to see in the console, console.log, I want it to say success, whatever that success object is. So if I try to, to send the email and it all works, afterward in the console something will be displayed that says success plus whatever that object is. Probably it'll just say OK. We'll do something very similar for the failure. In failure, we'll have an anonymous function with a failure object, console log failure colon failure, and we'll see what that is. What kind of failure happens? Let's say a person, a failure could be, they're going to send the email, but they said never mind, and they canceled it. Well, the whole operation was a failure, so you will see some output. This is the last item in the list of parameters, so there is no comma at the end. There is a comma at the end of everything else. Even no, but the last one, the failure callback, does not have a comma. Same syntax. Failure object, console.log, failure, plus failure. So 
there's either going to be a successful result or a failure result. Show me in the console either or. And that's it. We'll go back to your to your node command prompt. Cordova run. This is going to work the best in a real device. If you do Cordova run browser, it's not going to work at all really. There's no email system built into the browser. If you do Cordova emulate Android, I think it kind of works, but it'll want for you to set up a Gmail account. To make it work the best, try it on a real device uh, and see if it works. Yes? Let's see, uh, right there, I guess, yeah, I had it up there, so yeah, I'm sure. That probably wouldn't have been a problem, but sure. Yes? Well, uh, how can I know if there is anything that um, sends you down to the system? In this order. In this order. It just has to be in this order. To send is the first one, then CC, then PCC, always in that order. All right, so I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to run this in my real device. Run Android device. <coughs> Set it to preferably to a real email address that you can check on our own Nexus tablets it'll probably send, let you send an email don't abuse it of course, don't abuse our tablets but put in your email address and see if it see if it works Okay, it's just taking a moment.
All right, so in my device, I'm going to go to the About screen. I have a brand new button, Contact Us. I hit that, and then I get a little pop-up down at the bottom that in my particular device, it says choose an email app. So I've got Gmail, OneDrive, etc. So I'll select Gmail. It goes directly to my, to my Gmail app, and it's got filled in already who's it coming from, of course, who's it going to, which the person can change. It's got the subject filled in, my SDC feedback. And it says regarding your app. Then it's also got the attachment of the graphic that was in the app. So I'm going to say regarding your app. Amazing. I'm going to send that email. I'm sending it to a real email address that I have. I'll click send. So this is going to send it <coughs> to see the console output. Remember, we can use Chrome to, to test devices. So when I click Send, it then says Success OK. So it just says that OK. So I'm uh, testing it. We got a couple of successes here. Again, in the in the best way to test it is on a real device. Question. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and click it. Let's see what happens. It should then pop up and give you a new screen where you're about to send it. Yeah, you can't show it up here if it's on your device.
whoever will put the email address that's been sent to you, they can get from yourself. Mm -hmm.
Yes, you should get options that it says, how do you want to send the email? If you have more than one email account, that's how you choose. Yes. At the least, it should say Gmail if you're on an Android. Uh, it's, it, it is basically up to an Android. I think email and Google fly. Uh, it's got to fly. Try, uh, try Gmail. So I'm loading it up here again just to try it. Contact pops up. It doesn't make sense why it says save to drive or OneDrive, but those are in my options too. Gmail is the one that makes sense. I'll select Gmail. And then um, it pops up. The email, the graphic gets attached if you type the path right, of course, from this person and then to whoever I put to over there. And then my SDCE feedback on subject regarding your app. Great stuff. And then I'll click send. And why? Just one quick thing. So everyone heard that? Everyone heard Link get his item? Uh, that this is the other email. So if you're sending it to my email there, I'm, I'm getting it. That's the proof of it right there. <laughs> I, turned, I allowed myself to turn up the volume so that you can hear it. <laughs> Question. Oh, okay, because it's, it has a graphic attached, uh, it might think, let's save it to drive. That, that might make sense. Yeah. All right, so you guys heard that, you heard the sound, so I did get the email uh, that I sent to myself. Uh, you might have sent it to if you used my email, but that was the point, to put your email to try to send it, see if it worked. Uh, we'll do one more, then we'll take a break. If it didn't quite work, that's okay. We're going to do another version of it that's very similar, and then we'll take our break. I want to do something similar here, but this time to let the person choose when to focus on a social network. This is the example about your app is so great, you want the person to then uh, tell their friends on Facebook or tweet about it on Twitter, saying, hey, look at this great app that I found. So uh, let's do this. We need something similar. We need a button that will activate something, and the something will be similar, but except that instead of it going directly to email, it will let them select a share. So um, 
hang in Ernesto. You can, for the moment, just pause there. Let's continue with what we've got here. We'll figure out your issue in a moment. So let's go over to back to the index file and on the same about, we can put it wherever we want, of course, but in the same about, copy that paragraph again that had contact us and paste it and then we'll change it to something like share the app. Share our app or however you want to word it. So copy that paragraph, paste it below itself and um, data roll button again and there is a data icon I believe it's <coughs> action action creates an icon that is like the classic share icon button or ID that is of BTN share and we'll say share it doesn't matter and then the button will say share the app point is we need some button with some ID and some text and some icon for it to be a trigger. Then the JavaScript, we will write the JavaScript to activate that and the code will be very similar to the share via email with a couple less parameters with the same sort of idea. All right, so I've got a new button. Let's switch over to the JavaScript. We need to do the jQuery selector to select the button. We can share it. That'll have an on click and it'll launch some function. If we go back to the code, after the end of function contact us, we're going to start the jQuery. Select something on some event, do something. The something is that ID of BTN share it. Pound BTN share it. Don't forget that pound. That's the ID. On click, comma, FN share it. So on, on click, comma, FN share it. Share it, share app. Maybe share app makes more sense. Next line we define function share it, what it does. It's going to be similar to what we have above. Function f and share it. The end of share it. It's going to have again the window dot plugins window. It's window and plugins, social sharing. That's the same as before. But then the difference is simply dot share. This is the one where you'll get all of the user will get all of the possibilities. They'll now be able to access Twitter or Facebook or Flickr or Instagram or whatever they've got installed. So the point of that is, look at this great app that I found. Let me share it to my Snapchat. So they click that share button, Snapchat pops up, and this will get sent directly to their Snapchat. We need a bunch of parameters here again. So we'll do it the same way that we'll break this into a couple of lines and put no. We don't need all the same ones because it's only about four of them. And I'll explain what the fields are. This is the same plugin, it's just different syntax. Let's break that. We need null, comma, message, null, subject, null, attachment. So none of the, of the two field the CC field or the BCC field. These are attachments. And then it ends with the success and the failure callbacks.
no comma on the final one. And then call back. No comma. Okay, so the idea here is, well actually, sorry, there's one more. After attachments, there's also one we hadn't seen before. No, URL. We can attach a link. You often have that on these social networks, right? You share uh, a text or a picture or something, and there's also a link that gets sent. So here in address, the way this could work is, in our example, we want to share our we want to share our app on the app store we want to tell if someone likes our app we want them to be free promotion for <coughs> us so they'll click there and they'll tweet check out our check out this great app download it here i'll show you where you can get your download link amazon gives you a download link for your app you haven't published your app but i can show you how to get the download link so that when you publish your app you can add it later the message here so the main you know, the main body of the tweet or the post to Facebook or whatever will be right here. We'll say, uh, check out the My SDCE app. Depending on the network that it's being shared to, there may be a subject, uh, like LinkedIn. Twitter doesn't have a subject, it's just got the tweet. So whatever you write here, you sort of have to think about that not every network will take the subject line. So it should not be super important. The super important one is the message. If you if you don't have a subject, it's okay that you lose it. So what I can say here is just another variation of what I have above. I can say download the MySDCE app. Just to kind of test it out, I'll put the same attachment, the same graphic. You know what, we, what, you could do this might be more fun. Instead, let's attach your, your app's icon. Your app's icon is inside of the res folder. You can do that. We're coming from the root of the app. It doesn't have to be that you have to bring it from the www folder. I don't have my app's icon there. In the res folder I do, which I called icon. So what you want there in quotes, res slash icon dot, dot ping, or whatever yours is called, or your splash screen if you want to do that. So you're not limited to stuff inside the, the WW folder, you just set its path. So I'm going to attach the icon of my app, which in my case is like a little cat with a top hat. That'll get attached to the tweet, to the Facebook post. If I'm sending this to Instagram, it'll get attached to Instagram. URL, if I want to include there a... Um, oh, one thing here, uh, attachments in an array. So you can have more than one attachment, like creating an album. Therefore, an array. Maybe try that. Maybe also comma, quote, and point it to some other graphic. So you, need, you need the brackets. This is an array. Go back. Make sure you've got bracket notation, array notation around your, your graphic, even if it's one graphic. <coughs> exactly. So just a comma and then another graphic here. Not a choice. You have to tell it what you want. Well, it, you can pre. This is all about pre-populating it, so we can automatically attach a certain graphic. But the person, when they've loaded up to their Twitter, they can still choose another graphic if they want. URL in quotes. So here, I want to add the link to actually download my app, and most app stores give you a link where your app is. Let's take a little digression to find the link of an, apps, of an app on the Amazon App Store. If you manage to eventually publish your app to Amazon, there will be a link. You can get the examples of previous students. 
if you search Campos MySDCE, you can find My Example app, for example. My Example app, for example. So, oh, look, there's Gracie's. She will be missed. Uh, so, if you want to use one of these apps that does exist, what you can do is go to uh, the app, and when you're inside of an apps listing, you can go look at share, and then the link to this will show up there. The link up there is not the best link. A better link is inside of share. And everything on Amazon has this, actually, no matter the product. If you go to share, the share text, you'll see it right there. A nice, compact, short link to any product on Amazon. That's the address that I'm going to add to my app. It is case sensitive. Search any app, for example, Campus, my SDCE. And then when you go there, you can click the share link on the right side, and there's a link. So here in quotes, I'm going to put that, and the capitalization does matter. So that's BF, lowercase 9i, uppercase PB. You can put any link there. You can put a link to you know, google.com, doesn't matter. But if you want to see, if you want to test it fully in action, that is a link to a real app in the App Store. Then we'll have our success and our failure. That's We can pretty much just copy that from the previous one. It's going to be the same thing. I'm going to save myself some effort, so I will copy the previous success function and the previous failure function. This one lets the user select from any of the social networks or apps they have installed on their device. Share via email focuses on sending the person to their email account. If you look at the documentation, there's one that automatically goes to Twitter, automatically to Instagram. This one lets the person select. So on mine, it's loading up. Actually, I think, oh yeah, there we go, loaded up. So then I go to the About screen. I have a brand new button, Share the App. I click Share the App, and I get a listing of possible social networks. Actually, I didn't, so let me check my console. Unexpected token. Okay, so I missed something. Line 394. Oh, I got double commas. Okay, there we go. All right, let me try that again. It's loading up. Need to put a better splash screen eventually. Uh, go to the share app. Uh, it gets click and it pops up right here, and I see share with a big old list instead of the first one's a big list. In my case, in my device, I have Maps, direct message to Twitter, Google Plus, Instagram, etc. So in my case, I'll try Twitter. I'll send a regular tweet. I'll click that. I got switched over to the Twitter app. When this loads up, the Twitter app automatically then wrote, check out the check out my SDCE app. It, it got the part about um, right here. 
and check out the MySDC app. I'm going to click the tweet button. And I sent this to a real Twitter email that exists, a, Ritter, a real Twitter account. So check this out. I did send this to Twitter for real. There's a Twitter address if you want to see it. I said this 12 seconds ago. So check out the nice to see app. And then it, it, it applied that URL and everything. It didn't seem to actually apply the icon. So maybe we can't access the, the res holder. Unless I misspelled it. Okay, yeah, so looking here, uh, supports attaching files from the internet. So you could put a path to a picture on the internet in the local system or from the WW folder. So from the WW folder, not the REST folder. Local file system, I suppose, if that's uh, if you set a full path inside your memory card. Yeah, whatever graphic you've got in the WW folder, it should then attach it. I'm going to try that actually, so I'll copy that in there. So the documentation seems to say you can grab your graphics from WW folder, not from res. So I copied my icon into there, and I'll check it one more time. So I did see it in the preview, and now if I look on the Twitter account, there it is. It's kind of weird, but uh, there it is. So right now I sent the same thing, and this time I got attached the graphic. It did attach the graphic, so I need to go in and and delete it, but it worked. You can check it for real yourself. If you go to the address twitter.com slash vmc inc, I sent it over to a Twitter account that I've got on the device. 
I can further test it over on, um, I do share app again. This time uh, I have Instagram on this. So if I select Instagram, the Instagram app is loading up. And it says right there, send it to Instagram. Sure. Next. And share. If you want to see that, you can go to Instagram.com slash VMC Inc. That's the VMC Inc. That's the other VMC Inc. The VMC Inc. There it is. So if you go to that one, there's the graphic. Just sent it. Don't forget to give it a like. So I sent it off to, a, to an Instagram account. See, it all depends on what the person has on their, on their device. So you'll get a list of possible apps. Then the person chooses, I want to share this app to my Facebook. So then their Facebook app loads up and it sends it to Facebook. All right, let's take our first break and make sure it all works and then we'll do some more. We'll start to then talk about a map. So it's about 7.50. We'll take a break until 8.